Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Acer C720 Chromebook with an Intel Core i3 Haswell processor. Uh, Acer offers a number of different Chrome OS laptops, and they come in a couple of different configurations with different processors and other features. This is the most powerful one that the company's released to date, and is really one of the most powerful Chromebooks anybody's released to date. It sells for about $350, so it's still a relatively inexpensive laptop, but with that Core i3 Haswell CPU, it uh, it scores higher in benchmarks and, and other things than most uh, Chromebooks that are available. Uh, Chromebook is a laptop that runs Google's Chrome OS operating system. Uh, it's based around the Chrome web browser, but it doesn't mean that it's limited just to accessing websites. There is more you can do with it, and we'll get to that in a, in a moment. Uh, first, let's take a quick look at the hardware. We've got uh, HDMI, USB 3.0, headset, and power adapter. USB 2.0, SD card slot, and a lock slot here. The system is about 0.8 inches thick, weighs about 2.8 pounds, so it's reasonably thin and light. Uh, it's not a fanless system, but it's, uh, you see the vents here and on the bottom, but it's uh, pretty quiet during normal operation. I, I rarely hear the fans kick in at all. Uh, in terms of uh, hardware on the inside, it's got 2 to 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of solid state storage, uh, and a little sticker here that says you're going to void the warranty if you remove the screw underneath that sticker. So opening up the case is not necessarily something that Acer recommends. Um, fortunately, while the 2 gig version sells for $350, the 4 gig version is only $380. So if you want the extra RAM, you might as well just pay for it up front. Uh, it gets around 7 hours of battery life, but if that's not necessarily enough for you, or if you think you might need to charge it, the uh, Adapter is relatively compact. You can hold it in one hand here. It doesn't weigh that much. Um, it's smaller than a typical laptop charger, but not as compact as, say, a cell phone charger. Now, one of the things that's nicest about Chrome OS is how fast it is, because it's a fairly lightweight operating system. It resumes from sleep instantly. It boots in under 10 seconds. And that's true even if you get a version that doesn't have a Core i3 processor. But on this one, uh, it never feels slow, almost no matter what it is that I try to do. Um, in terms of uh, what you can do, there's... Um, a lot, there are a lot of different apps, so of course you can visit any website that you'd like. Um, you can use Netflix, you can use YouTube, you can use Hulu, you can use Google Drive or Google Docs, uh, Dropbox, everything. Um, and you can see that there are many, many apps that you can install here as well. So there are browser extensions and applications that are basically shortcuts to websites. And there's a growing number of applications that offer offline capabilities too. So one of the early criticisms of Chromebooks was that you cut the internet connection and what do you do with a web browser? Well, you can play Angry Birds, you can play Cut the Rope, you can use Google Calendar. There's a number of applications that offer some sort of offline capabilities. Um, and some of them will even synchronize your data so that you can read, view your calendar when you're offline uh, and it'll synchronize when you go back online. There's also a small number of Android applications that now run on Chrome OS. Uh, as of the recording of this video, there's literally only four that are officially uh, supported and included in the Google Play Store, but that could change in the future and we could see more applications that don't necessarily even rely on the web browser at all. So for instance, I've got Duolingo up and running here. This is the Android version of Duolingo that just happens to be uh, running on a Chromebook. Tu no hablas español. Tu no hables español. And so this is an application for learning and practicing languages. And finding out that I can't spell. Habla español. And sometimes I do get them right. So, uh, so I've got Duolingo running there as if it were an Android app, which is kind of neat. Uh, in terms of video performance, let's go ahead and uh, fire up a video here. Hi, this is Brad Linder with Oops. the Google Chromecast plugged in. Okay, so everything that you see here shows up on there. We can surf the web this way. Now, uh, in terms of video, it handles HD video playback just fine, and in fact, I even use the HDMI output to connect an external display and play HD video on both screens simultaneously, two different videos at once. So, uh, little things like that that might be tougher to do on some Chromebooks work just fine here. Um, in terms of viewing angles, you can see, again, that the um, further you tilt back the screen or forward, the more it looks like a photo negative. The side viewing angles are uh, significantly better 
but uh, it is a relatively inexpensive display. So that's one area where this uh, could probably be improved. I wouldn't mind a higher resolution display and I wouldn't mind one with better viewing angles. But in terms of video playback or uh, playing pretty much any of the games that are available in a Chrome web browser, uh, performance-wise, it's fine. Um, in fact, it's uh, probably, like I said, the best one around. The only thing that's really come close in terms of raw benchmark results would be the uh, Google Chromebook Pixel, which I reviewed uh, back in 2013. Uh, that model has an Intel Core i5 Haswell processor. So it's an older generation, but it's a Core i5 instead of Core i3. And it's a premium machine with a backlit keyboard, a high resolution display and so forth. It sells for over $1,000. Uh, in terms of benchmarks uh, for JavaScript and HTML5 and other things, um, some tests the Chromebook Pixel came out ahead and some tests this came out ahead, even though the Chromebook Pixel still sells for well over $1,000 while this guy's $350 and up. Um, if you're not satisfied though with the performance and capabilities of uh, Chrome OS itself, there's more you can do. You can enter developer mode and you can find uh, instructions for uh, doing that at lilliputing.com. And once you're in developer mode, it'll basically wipe all your data, but then restore it if you log back in with your Google credentials. And then you can open a terminal window. Uh, and go to shell and use uh, various scripts to do different things. And the thing that I like to do in a script is use Crouton to install Ubuntu. So I'm actually running uh, Ubuntu 14.04 with a um, LXDE desktop environment, and that lets me do things like run the Firefox web browser on a Chromebook or the GIMP image editing program. Uh, I've also installed Abbey Word for word processing and VLC for media playback. So it basically turns it into a full-fledged computer and having 32 gigs of storage might not be a lot of space, but it's more than you get on some Chromebooks for uh, full desktop style applications like these. So uh, that's a kind of neat thing to do. And since it's running in a ch root environment and sharing the Linux kernel with Chrome OS, I can toggle back and forth with a key combination here, control, shift, alt, and arrow keys. And they're both running simultaneously side by side here and um, there's no real configuration required because it's sharing the Linux kernel. Wi-Fi works out of the box, uh, audio, video, uh, display drivers, everything just works. So um, the ability to run full desktop style applications really makes this uh, a full-fledged computer and not just a device for surfing the web from your couch. Now, if you are basically looking for a device for surfing the web from the couch or doing other uh, sort of simple activities, using it as a secondary machine or primary machine if you don't necessarily need a lot of uh, desktop style applications or other things that might not be available on a Chromebook, um, this is probably one of the best ones you can get, except for the fact that so is the $199 version. So uh, this Core i3 processor really comes in handy, I guess, if you want to install Linux or do other advanced tricks like plug in an external display and play two videos at once, which really there's no reason to do most of the time. Um, the Celeron Haswell version, which sells for $199 and up, is just about as fast in most day-to-day -day activities. It doesn't score quite as well on benchmarks, um, but in terms of uh, starting almost instantly, being able to run multiple applications, uh, or multiple web applications at least, um, it works just fine and it runs Linux just fine. So I think the uh, the cheaper versions are probably uh, just fine for most users and this $350 version is really better for power users. And it feels weird saying a $350 laptop is for power users, but that's what it's come to with these Chromebooks because they have such low starting prices. Um, if you really want a premium machine, the Chromebook Pixel is still an excellent device. It's just really more expensive uh, than any of the consumer level Chromebooks that we've seen. So uh, if I had to say, uh, you know, anything, you know, to, to wrap this up. This is probably the best Chromebook that I've used in terms of price and value so far, um, but I'm not sure that I would recommend it for everybody over the cheaper version with an Intel Celeron processor, especially if you wanted a touchscreen because the Celeron version of the Acer C720 is available with a touchscreen, whereas the Core i3 version, at least as of mid-September 2014, is not. So that's a look at the uh, Acer C720 with Core i3. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. You can find more details, photos, information on installing Linux, and more at lilliputing.com.